All right guys, so we're here at Micro Center today and we're gonna be doing something fun. We're actually gonna be building a second simulator rig to bring to our studio because we need to start doing head to head. We've been doing like time attack and like who can get the faster lap, but we need to be able to bump people off track. I mean, that's how real racing happens, right? Anyway, today's video is sponsored by Micro Center. We're here in the testing store and we're gonna be piecing together another ultimate racing rig so that we can actually figure out who's really the best. The all new IQ Link ecosystem for Corsair finally removes all the cable clutter from your PC. IQ Link components synchronize RGB lighting and settings between connected devices with a single wire, creating a chain of devices on a single port via the Link Hub. Take control of your system and ditch the clutter by following the sponsored link in the description below. Oh man. <laughs> So when we talk about sim pedals and stuff, you can't go wrong with starting off with something like a G920 from Logitech. I mean, this would be like your, your first step up from like a controller, right? You all know that driving around with a controller and thumbsticks is not indicative of like real driving. So you got like the G920 here, which comes with pedals and then your steering wheel base that can like clamp on your table and stuff. So the G920 is like a bundle, right? It's got the pedals and the wheel. If you were to step up naturally, you'd look at the Logitech like True Force Pro, which is more of a belt driven type of base. I think it's belt driven, it feels belt driven. Um, we'll talk about direct drive and belt drive in a second here, but it's gonna have more realistic force feedback. The wheel's kind of small for both of these. It's like a 12 inch wheel, uh, maybe not the size of like a real wheel, but easy to use because of the fact that it clamps onto your desk. This is not a bundle though. You would have to, you would have to then like buy the pedals separately but you're gonna step it up in quality pretty significantly versus, you know, like the, the G920 versus the True Force Pro. So the next logical step up from there would be like Thrustmaster. Thrustmaster has a pretty wide range of products. I have like the Ferrari 458 Spider design here, which really sort of mimics like the Ferrari wheel. You got the T80 as well. Um, they work on Xbox and PlayStation. So does like the Logitech stuff or whatever. Um, then we've got some other brands here of like spring-loaded pedals and stuff, H pattern shifters that come with the wheel. Um, much more like high end from there. Then we start talking about like direct drive. And sorry about the noise, we are in a store. But then we start talking about, talking about direct drive. And this is where the wheel is attached directly to the motor. So you get the motor resistance, which gives a much more realistic feel to something like either uh, power steering or non-power steering. Race cars that don't have power steering. So you can actually go in and really dial up the resistance in there to make it feel as realistic as possible. Then we start talking about standalone pedals and, and it really starts to go up from there. Like we got Moza R5 right here, which is probably a really, really good option for uh, giving you a direct drive base as well as a wheel that's not gonna break the bank. Like this, this probably comes in at like five or 600 bucks for just the wheel and base. And then you have to obviously pair pedals and stuff with it. Like here's the S SRP racing pedals right here, which you could pair with it separately, 150 bucks for the pedals. Not a bad price, honestly. When you start putting together um, these types of kits and stuff. But if you really wanna start looking at like where people start to be able to say, this is a good training simulator to practice for real driving experiences, we gotta go to the next aisle. Then you start looking at like Moza Racing's higher end, like ecosystem stuff. So you can see here, these are the same pedals we actually have on our rig. Uh, back at the studio. Very similar base, but it's a direct drive base. It's got a screen on here for giving you telemetry stuff with your car. Uh, you hear people are on the racing sim now. So anyway, it, you can see tire temp, anything you want this to display depending on the simulator that you're playing. So something like iRacing or Assetto Corsa is gonna give you a ton of stuff that you can customize that screen with to show you. Um, and then obviously you have like your F1 style, GT style wheel here. So you can on the fly adjust things like the brake bias, your ABS speed controller, DRS, um, even like your, your boost on the fly. A lot of stuff can be controlled on this. In fact, you could spend countless hours just playing around with those settings, getting it all tuned up. Um, so this is like everything you would need in a box. And then you can start to get stuff like piecemeal, right? So we've got right here the KS steering wheel, which is separate from the base and you can piece together stuff. This is the X29 right here. I'm not even sure which brand this is, but you know, then you come over here to the glass case where the reason why stuff is behind a glass case is because it starts to get a little pricey. Like the X29 is 649. The, um, the TK version over here of the Formula Pro Elite, 1250 bucks, 1439 for that one down there, 1099 for that one for like a GT style drift style. So it, you really can just kind of go nuts with this. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna piece together one of their bundles because they do have bundle deals with the rig and the seat and all that sort of stuff. And we'll show you what we're gonna go with and then we're gonna go build it. 
How is a chair fragile? That doesn't make any sense. If you're gonna be sitting in it, how is it fragile? I don't know. Hopefully it's not fragile. So this is the uh, Speed One Sim Bucket Seat XXL from Sim Lab. It's a side mount, just like any kind of Sparco deal. I love how it even has a built-in halo. You know, if I need a helmet and a halo for this, something went really wrong with our sim rig. But it's XXL because I'm XXL, okay? So I've had plenty of seats in the past where I'm just like, <laughs> right? I'm not doing that this time. I also am grabbing this thing for my rig at home. The Stream Deck. Mark one, Mark two mounting kit. It's kind of expensive, 150 bucks, but it's designed to just put a stream deck in there. And if anyone has ever dealt with like having your sim rig away from your keyboard and desktop, it sort of sucks trying to push certain buttons. So I could have the steam deck, even control like my stream and stuff obviously from there. But I just think it'll come in handy. This is for me personally. This is not for this. I think that price is a bit ridiculous though, if you want to know the truth. Okay, well, whatever. What is that? Dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> Nick, stay with the stuff. How do we not have one of those? I think the clutch pedal's bound. Okay. <laughs> going straight, you're not gonna spin me out. Damn it. <laughs> All right, so basically we just recreated what they have sitting right over there. So this is the Formula Pro Elite wheel. Um, and then we have the adapter for this, the quick release, to mount it to a SimCube uh, steering wheel base. So this is the SimCube uh, Pro, or the SimCube 2 US, which is the exact same one I actually have for my personal rig, uh, which is a very nice unit. I'm happy because of the fact that the steering wheel now is gonna have its own USB connection to the PC rather than a wireless connection to the hub. So if you guys aren't aware, SimCube's actual wheels have a wireless connection to their base, which seems nice because you can infinitely turn it and not have a cable wrapping around and getting in the way. Um, the problem is if you get to turn it off, the battery dies and that really sucks. So they don't have pogo pins or anything like the Moza has, um, which is unfortunate for SimCube's own ecosystem. A little complaint of mine, but the wheel, this wheel has its own connection to the PC and then a mechanical connection to the base. I already showed you guys I got this for myself at home. These are the pedals. These are actually an open box pedal, but again, they're the exact same pedals that are on their rig right over there on display. So they are load cell. They are adjustable. So we can go in here and adjust the amount of resistance on the brake and then on the clutch, obviously on the gas pedal. We have a ton of different like action points of where we can set the pedals to be, the amount of leverage we want, uh, how upright they are. So that's all fully adjustable. This is an open box unit here, which has all of the accessories. So we're not too worried about it being open box. All the bolts and everything are there. And then the rig, the rig does have, um, it comes automatically with the monitor arm, which is this guy right here. We're just gonna get a couple of other things to make sure we're, we're not light on some stuff we need to put it together. Like we're gonna get a power strip uh, so we can have everything connected to it. Like if we look here, so you can see there's actually a base built into this uh, or a stand built into this for your PC tower. So you have a dedicated tower for your rig. Um, so we're gonna be mounting a PC to this and then we're gonna have a USB hub to make sure all of our USB devices are plugged you know, into the PC nice and neat. Cause you guys know I like to have everything routed nicely cable wise for our rigs. Uh, and then a power strip and whatnot for that. All right, so that's everything. We just gotta get it back to the studio and probably spend the next few hours at least assembling it. Please not line this in. <laughs> that's not my job. I gotta get paid to line this thing. <laughs> you got the line is that bottom one. Not if we're careful. <laughs> well, I wanna make sure I'm filming if it does fall. Is it gonna line it? Dude, it's so sketchy. <laughs> Push it back. <laughs> there's like six inches of gap. That was just... Yay, we got everything. And there's some stuff over there. And then there's a J over there. And a Nick with a tamale. But it doesn't matter <laughs> because... And it's a hot tamale. It doesn't matter because I am leaving for the rest of the year and I don't have to take your guys' crap anymore. So bye. See you, Phil. Oh wait, I should probably leave the camera. Have fun editing. Good luck audience, because I'm taking over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's the boxes right there. Three boxes, got to put them together. That's like the main base, and then the attachment accessory type stuff, and then that's for the triple monitor right there. And Nick's off running an errand real quick, so it's just me here. He'll be back in a little bit to help me with this. Um, but yeah, Phil is taking a vacation through the rest of the year, and we'll be back until uh, like way after the first. So. Like I said, good luck everybody else. I'm gonna be the one editing this. It's probably gonna be like crap. Uh, it's gonna be a lot like the good old days. But I'm gonna save you guys the the boredom 
of watching us assemble that, what I'll do is if I come across any nuances or weirdness as we're putting it together, uh, I'll just kind of show that stuff, but I'm not gonna give you any sort of like a step-by-step -step or like take you guys along for the ride of building it or any time lapse or anything like that. Cause this is pretty involved. Like putting these rigs together is not a quick, easy process. So I just wanna focus, get it together so we can get it up and running as soon as possible. Um, that way I can sort of compare it to our track racer. This is our track racer rig right there. We did a review on earlier this year. I actually have an identical setup of this to go into my house, which I haven't put together yet. Cause I gotta take my buddy revolution out of the house. And I just, I kind of want to redo the game room and ADD, you know how that goes. You start going, I want to do all these things and then you don't get started with any of them because they all seem overwhelming. Okay, let's get started. Oh, okay. Just in case he drops it on his face. Comedy. A guy dropped his pants. Have you ever been to the circus? <laughs> okay. The office on in the background and everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, He's back. it's almost put together. Oh. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we gotta do a ca coffee run for that. Yeah, I'm out of energy. I need adult fuel. Adult fuel? What? Okay. Uh, this whole place is <laughs> it's a disaster. Uh, Nick, you wanna sit in there real quick so we can kind of show where. <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> so we can show where we are real quick. Um, this seat is very upright, even though we have it slanted back as far as possible. So. We slid the seat bracket back. We ended up using my Asatec Invic Invicta pedals, which is unfortunate because then the pedals are much closer to the end versus the standalone pedals, mostly because the open box we got, unfortunately, was missing some stuff, which was on the label. And then we didn't read the label that says incomplete. So, yeah. Anyway, we, um, so what we need to do now is because our arms, like, show them your arms, like how stretched out they are to reach the wheel. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so with my sitting position all the way back, which is because I'm six foot four, um, we need to slide the whole bracket back. So they unbolt, like they loosen up on the side right there, and then they'll, they'll just slide. Yeah, like and I can, this, this whole piece. Yeah, the whole thing right here will slide back. So we're going to adjust that tomorrow. And then um, Nick is still building the monitor arms over there. But it's late in the evening now. It's time to go home. This is where we are so far. I'm actually, like, I kind of like how just sort of contained everything. You're like a brick of SimCube right now, or, or like <laughs> racing stuff. So you can see we have keyboard mounts, mouse mount, which is nice. And then there's the pedal and everything. The The wheel is a little bit upright. We might go a little bit taller with it and then a little more straight. Got to figure out the right angle for that. So I feel like it might be the seat still. Yeah, we might change the seat. We haven't decided. I mean, the seat's very upright. Like we really want it to recline some more. I really think we could get, if we get like those like sparkle brackets, they'll give us more play. Cause it gives us more, more holes to play with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what? It gives us more holes to play with. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. But like, cause right now we're, the problem is if we go all the way low to the bottom, we, we it, can't. it interferes with the, the bolt. Yeah, we can't get to that lower bolt hole because the seat hits, sits, hits one of the mounting bolts that's inside of that bracket, like for the slider. So if we had more holes, <laughs> we could literally just bring that whole section up and tilt it back. So this is more reclined versus being straight up and down. Yeah. I mean, you could probably fix it with cushions, but. Because we really want the butt to go down more and the hip to come up more. Yeah. Then, then the back reclines a little bit. Right now it's very upright, so. It's not terrible. It's just that particular SimLab seat wasn't really intended for this, for this, yeah, for this, this rig. rig. Like if we went with one of the TK seats, then it would fit better, but we didn't. I went with that. I mean, it, it's not bad. I just feel like we need more adjustability. We, we really just need like the hips to angle up more and the back to angle back more. I think that's like the big thing with Sim rigs though. It's like, it's, we're trying to build it for two different, like three different, multiple people, multiple size people. Right. And most, most sim rigs are going to be built specifically one body shape. By the time we get it fit for us, Phil will be like, this is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily we have another rig that yeah. we can fit to him. That's the nice thing about the uh, Alpine from Track Racer is the fact that everything is adjustable. The seat angle, the steering wheel angle, the pedal angles, even the pedals are on sliders. Look at this mess. Look at this mess. And we're still not even done. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow it'll actually be running. <laughs> 
The Corsair HS80 Max wireless low latency gaming headset features Dolby Atmos spatial audio for PC and cross-platform compatible with PC, Mac, PS4 and 5 and mobile devices creating a single headset solution. The long-lasting battery life and plush comfort ear cups provide a comfortable fit for long gaming sessions while the omnidirectional microphone with NVIDIA broadcast guarantee your teammates will always hear you even when the action both in and out of game is intense. To see the full list of specs and features of the Corsair HS80 Max wireless gaming headset, click the link in the description below. The next day. I decided to go ahead and change the pedals again. I'm not gonna use these Ace Attack pedals anymore. I'm actually using uh, the SimLab pedal set right here. So this is the XP1LC3 pedal set. So these are gonna be better than the Ace Attack for a couple of reasons. One, the problem with the Ace Attack is as you can see, it has its own platform. And it basically means that based on where the pedals are now, it's like they're mounted to the frontmost position. It made the whole sim feel kind of crammed because we really want the pedals to be more farther out here so we have a better platform for our foot and get more length out of the rig. So I'm gonna take these off and put a third set of pedals on there. But one of the things we were talking about yesterday is we're not too happy with the way that the seat is very upright. And this isn't necessarily a problem with the rig or the seat, it's just the way this rig, this bracket and this seat work. Now you might notice it's kind of, it's really kind of dark in there, I guess you can't see. There is a lower hole right there you can see we're not using. One, that's not gonna get us much more recline at all. And two, it can't actually use that hole because this seat hits the bolt for the bracket on the slider before we can actually access that hole. So if you look at the seat position right here, you can see it's very, very upright. So down the street from where we were is actually Sparco, you know, with the racing seats and stuff. We got a new seat. So it's actually kind of neat in the fact that we can now demonstrate how you can use realistically any seat that you want with this that uses side mounts or even mounts to the sliders if you want. So these are the brackets that come with it. They're red. So now we're gonna have red brackets, green frame, gold keyboard mounts and stuff. So I'm thinking I might actually just spray paint these black. Just to kind of show you what these look like though. They give us a ton of adjustability. They're designed specifically for their seat. Here they are right here. They're red, as you can see. But before I go painting anything, I need to mount everything up and make sure that it's gonna fit properly. So we're gonna get back to that. Nick's gonna keep building the monitor arm over there and get the monitors and stuff mounted up and I'm gonna keep working on the frame and the pedals. All right, after many, many hours, here we are. Here's where we are and we still aren't done. Actually, that um, Origin PC video we did the review on recently, that's gonna be the rig for this setup, which is perfect. It's got RTX 4090 for going triple monitors. We're gonna need all that. You can see the pedals there. I love these pedals. They look so good. They're like beefy as heck too. They feel nice too. Well, like one of the one of the things that I like, and you can comment on this, is so the brake is a load is is a load cell, but you can see right there, there's like a rubber shim. And as Nick is pushing the brake, you can see it compressing. By default, a lot of these, these companies like to put the stiffest polymer in there that they can to make it like a race car brake so there's no give. But you can actually feel the brake better with the out of the box setting from SimLab. And then obviously you've got adjustability in all these pedals. So we've got angle adjustables on all three. We've got pivot point adjustability. And they're actually putting down some like two-sided rubber, like adhesive rubber on the front, like on the metal for like a grip tape for shoes, yeah. You can see we've got the monitor arm up, but there's no monitors on there because we need different hardware to mount our three LG <laughs> monitors. <Yeah>. So <laughs> for now, they're very transparent, easy to see through monitors. That's the desktop right there. Uh, let's see, so we got the keyboard and mouse mount, which is very convenient. This could go up a little bit too. Yeah, I just scooted it back because then it was kind of underneath the micro, the keyboard tray. Oh. Uh. So because everything's on these slide rails, you have like so much near infinite adjustability. That right there is our emergency stop. Because this is a high-end direct drive steering wheel base, there's a lot of torque. So if you were to get caught up on like, I don't know, you're, I'm trying to think of a situation where someone would get caught in the wheel. Like my first thought would be like kids, but kids honestly shouldn't be playing on a direct drive wheel anyway, unless just you turn- Just don't put your thumbs in here. Just, <laughs> just hold from the outside. So if you do hit a wall, just, just let it go. Yeah. And then, and, and then hit the <laughs> but. Well, it's that, that button is, is turns off all the force feedback. Mm -hmm. That way if it gets if you get caught up in something somehow, you can just stop the motor from, from trying to bind. Let's talk about some of the nuances of this. 
Um, because the seat. <laughs> okay, the seat is a it, the seat is the most personal part of the rig. It's the part you're literally sitting it took, in. Yeah, it took that was probably the thing that ate the most time in our assembly. I think it's getting the seat because we were right. yeah because it was constant readjustment for us. All right, so speaking of rails and adjustment, you can see there's some scratches on here. Um, this is this is my bad. It's not really the the rig's fault, and the, there's some of those scratches kind of periodically throughout. And the reason for that is because I tighten things down before I had them in their final position. And because it's just tightening metal on metal, the anodizing gets scratched, and then that's what happens. So that's my bad. There's some more right there to the right. There's a lot more right there, actually, because that's where the, the main oh, piece was. Yeah. yeah. So that's unfortunate, but you, you know, with everything put together, you don't really notice it too much. Um, it is very Christmas tree themed, though, with our red brackets. I thought I would paint them, but then it took us so long to get the seat adjusted just right that I, I left it and I said it looks fine the way it is. Um, yeah, so let's talk about build quality. It's very, very, very rigid once it's all put together. As you can see, the PC base is holding up a water-cooled PC, no problem whatsoever. It's not sagging or anything. You can actually control the angle. So I have it tilted like one degree back towards the steering wheel instead of forward. It's also got these little... Um, I don't know, corner brackets on there to keep it from like sliding off the table. So that's nice. And then also this entire piece right here that the steering wheel is mounted to, I said in a previous clip that we had to scoot it closer to the seat. I did, I moved it. Uh, you can see the distance I moved it from the original scratches right there to where it is now. Tons and tons and tons of adjustability in this. And then because it has no casters or feet, we just threw some furniture casters underneath the front and the rear, and then a couple in the middle. Here's what we think, I think we're gonna do with it right now. It's time to go ahead and end this video, mostly because we can't get it up and running yet without the monitors. Here's how we're gonna sort of do this. All right, we moved all that stuff over there. We still have a lot of rearranging to do. We're thinking we might set the sim rig up in this corner permanently after we get furniture sort of figured out and rearranged. But with the casters, you can see Nick is actually able to move this pretty easily. Give the model wave, like your Vanna White right now. Gosh. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> so anyway, you can see he's able to slide that. Probably shouldn't be pushing it by the chair. But... Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? This had to go first, <laughs> and then that goes... Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, the okay. The base part, the main frame on the bottom for the pedal mounts and the seat mount and everything, short of the bracket and the seat, that's pre-assembled. Uh, the ease of assembly for most of the rig is like 8 out of 10. Yeah, easily, like yeah. For, for an easy factor. Because I originally thought we had to put all these pieces together. Me too. And after we opened the box, like, okay, most of the work's cut out. We just had to put together the, the steering wheel frame, like the steering wheel support mount, yeah. the PC mount, and then the side mount with the keyboard and stuff. That was all pretty easy. And there's a lot of like T-slot stuff that I didn't realize because I had to redo, I had to pull this apart after I realized. You have the to T-slot that in there, yeah. Going from the back as well. Well, the manual can be improved. The manual is oh, literally yeah. <laughs> the manual is literally nothing but a single page with an exploded view of how it goes, but it doesn't tell you the order of stuff. <laughs> and it's actually really compact too if you use VR and you don't have the monitor mount. But the monitor mount comes with it, so we wanted to at least try that Lock out. It up. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't have literally sixteen little bolts, M4s not being long enough. Or no, twelve. Twelve of them is what's keeping us from setting that part up. Damn it. All right, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. It's been a long two days. It's actually been two days worth of stuff back and forth getting all this set up. But that's the thing is like, Micro Center's got so many freaking options. And that's the, the biggest thing up until just a few years ago is having any options to go to and see in person um, was like not a thing. And obviously with more Micro Center stores opening, there's gonna be more opportunity for people to go and see this stuff in person, try it out. Um, but anyway, you guys can check out the links down in the description below. I have links to the to the store, obviously, where you can check out all the racing rim, uh, sim stuff. You can go with either one of their pre-bundled deals, or you can piece together your own deal. Um, just like all the other PC stuff there, it ranges from everything from beginner at 100 bucks all the way up to, you know, four or $5,000 if you want to spend that much. We should also note that they have the powered USB hubs and three packs of DisplayPort cables, which is really convenient. Yeah, three pack of cables, obviously, because Envy Surround. You know, I have not run Envy Surround since like 2015. It's gonna be really interesting. All right, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.